Whoa. Okay, there we go. Tripod. Check. Okay, good to go. Uh, so, good afternoon, YouTube. Not in that context, Dan. Not in the, uh, what was that? Uh, Scrooge? Nope. Nope. Yeah. That was the one with Bill Murray. Scrooge up. I don't know. Anyway. The uh, Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds uh, Christmas Carol. Not good afternoon in that context. Okay, so here we are. We are doing our first wall. This is the first load bearing wall inside. And so those are just braces to keep it square while we stood it and got it braced in and tied to that wall. We're tied together right there. Um, and now we're working on the second one, which is right there. So those are the two load bearing walls in this portion. And then we have some load bearing walls over here that we're gonna do next. So that's what we're working on. And yes, those are really tall. So all the way up there. Yep, these are gonna be tall walls. Yep, tall walls indeed. Okay. So we have, let's talk about laying out walls. So we started out over here and the first wall is 16 inches to the center, right? Is that what you did? So the main thing is you wanna make sure that as you're laying these out, this space right here will actually be shorter because this one needs to be 16 inches to the center of the edge so that your four foot, when you lay in a four foot uh, piece of drywall, lands right in the center of that stud. So then this is actually 16 inches from the edge of this stud to the center of this one. So this bay is smaller than every other bay. Then we come across here and we have a closet door right here. We laid out studs and we're like, nope, that's not right. We need to delete those. So we have a king stud. You see, there you go. King stud and a jack stud. The jack stud will go most of the way up because we're putting our header way at the top. Uh, and so it will be just the thickness of the LVL that we're using. Um, shorter than our king stud and then our header will be all the way at the top of the wall so that's what we're getting ready to do here and that's what Dan's getting ready to cut hey it worked Yes. 
Sorry. I was on that one. <laughs> like, what's going on? Okay, so the top plate that we were using had a pretty good twist in it. It was straight uh, as far as not having a bow in it, but it twisted. And our nails weren't pulling it shut, if you can see like right here. So they weren't pulling it shut. So we made our wrench that we can actually twist that. Uh, get the twist out of it with the wrench and then nail it shut. Well, we went all the way to the end of the wall and we did that and we used screws. So this was twisted significantly. We twisted it back, we put screws in the end and now it's holding it straighter than it was. So that's our handy dandy two by four wrench. So there we go. It's a twister. It's a twister, it's a twister. You want a screw or you want a nail? Okay. I like I, it there. I like it there. I can't tell. The window to the wall. He's got the whole wall in his hands. He's got the whole wall in his hands. <laughs> Fun director extraordinaire. Fun director. You're good. Just record. That way, if he falls, we get it on film. America's Finest Video. As long as you're not hurt. Good. This one, I can have one Okay, so I am basically standing in the fridge right now. And Burr. I wanted to make this wall a two by six wall so that I could then narrow it up right where the fridge goes. Make it bigger to make it smaller. <laughs> make it bigger to make it smaller. This is exactly right. Uh, so I could narrow it up and basically make a pocket into that wall so that a standard depth fridge will sit closer to a counter depth look when you get done instead of having your fridge stick out the front like what they normally do this will let it sit back oh another eh, four inches maybe not quite so it'll it'll let it sit, step back in there and then you also have you need enough space for your uh, water line to come up and everything so we're having to put in a king and two jack studs here. We'll go up above. We'll have a header, because it's still a load-bearing wall. We'll have a header that will support everything above it. Then we'll come back down, have two jacks and a king. 
the jacks are what holds the header up. They're cut short, and that's why they're called jacks, and is because they're uh, or cripples. But if you're using the card uh, suit methodology, they're not quite as big as a king. I don't know where no aces and queens are. It's just how it is. The queen's over in the chair, remember? <laughs> There's the queen. Long live the queen. The queen is not late. Everyone else is merely early. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, all of this just so that we can have a little pocket to push our fridge back in. Why are you cutting holes in the wall? Okay, so I poured this inside the wall. It was supposed to be on this side of the wall. It turned out it was just on this side of the wall. And so I probably need to cut it off. Um, the, that is to get electricity to the porch. And so I'm gonna put a box over here and it'll run over and out, and then we'll have a box out on the porch. Oh, which means I need to get this cut. Which blade would you need? Need that one. That one's a knife blade at this point. Okay, that at least lets us go back with the wall. Now I need to cut this so that we can get wire through it. Any sharp edges that can cut the Romex. It's not great. Oh, much better. Okay. I can live with that. Okay, spray foam. <laughs> 